get into it today because fuck it's fucking 5 p.m almost almost 5 p.m and uh, i have five chapters to get through so you know what let's just fucking get right into it i guess day three investigations sounds about right but it is right never mind it's fine <laughs> All right. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for... The Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. I don't want a Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those... What, 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 what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night prosecutor Neil... Neil I can, still can't fucking say his name. Neil Marshall was murdered. Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. You didn't see that one coming? It's... Is it not literally in the fucking case files? Uh, where was it? Witnesses. It literally says right there. <laughs> what the heck? Phoenix, please. All right, uh... It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together when she finished her work. And suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. Pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. Before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. And what happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly... A bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I, I can still see it now. Permanent picture? What you see in the instant that crime occurred? Thank you. You made it. <laughs> Murder scene. Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so much. I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. All the children in this game have PTSD. No, but for real though. For real, like... <laughs> Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make an airtight case. 
That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So we weren't able to testify about that. No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Elena... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at the time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Well, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the in interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was the detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Then I used to be a detective? I'd better have another talk with her. Okay, let's go see Miss Lana Sky. Lana! Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on, on the details? Especially about that unusual change of jobs. I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. A lot of revelations uh, were uncovered at the trial today. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well. Though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. A trial really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At the trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15 there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. The witness, Miss Starr, said... About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so faced before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. We still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was a deputy oh he was a deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He 
it was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever! They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. I mean, that's pretty normal, isn't it? To idolize your, your older siblings or something? Yeah. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Ken's help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, I became chief of poli po 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 police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Drake. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes. Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final, final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. The prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages, and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office, shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run the scene, Lena? It appears so. He was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. Mr. Gant owns up to his name? How so? When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. A demon equals demon, I see. <laughs> Evil AF. <laughs> I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room and just held her. Can't blame her. After all, her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest, also... Hi, Fleur. Thank you for making it. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. W what are you saying? There is no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. As his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. You love it? There is like this tiny little... Uh, what's it called? A rainbow. <laughs> On the side. Huh. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. The case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the chief's office. The site of the final SL9 murder. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. 
You're right. The chief of the det detectives seems the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later. I don't know why I went here, actually. <laughs> Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall! I never thought things turned this turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. You never know where life will lead you, huh, and Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But, Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with a broken tip? That was Joe Dark's, all right. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance the knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. Oh, so he can say prosecutor! <laughs> I had just made a detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother. He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the king of prosecutors. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transferal. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years had gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently, someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? They did something to him too. The commissioners would get suspicious. Now they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean Damon Gant and Lana Sky. The investigation lead, Damon Gant and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duel. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah. Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Scott was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me. What happened to my sister? 
Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. On a secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. Someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Feels very suspicious that everyone got demoted except Damon and... Demon. <laughs> Damon and Sky. And also Goodman. Anyone over here now? This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. If you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Oh, he actually talked to us. Emergency meeting. <laughs> With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do. About Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention her statement to the media and tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right, you can't go in there, it's off limits! Now oh, I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. <laughs> okay, sure. Marshall was and is a weird man, though I like him better now. <laughs> Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. She got that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant! Put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Rido, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can't appreciate that. I've had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. <laughs> what kind of office has an entire freaking pipe organ? Any office who has a team. <laughs> See that big picture on the wall over there? Or is am I no notes yet? I quit piano. It's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. 
I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out, I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case is nowhere with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Kent denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean, like, a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Back here? I don't know. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe! Aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, I'm serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is still out of the loop. See, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. He is a suspicious owl. <laughs> is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down, blah, blah, boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that... But as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick! Keep up the good work! Yes, sir! Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat! Yes, sir! You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir! Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier, while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. Seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, when was it? Um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in there, okay? His powers of recollections n recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Hold on, let me just do this first. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by this just then, so he killed him too. Then, when I can't read something about something about bodies, a jogger came out and seen and was killed as well, finally he turned himself in. Seems he was, pretty care he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. The crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness... Okay, Emma. Okay. Let's show him the uh, murder weapon, I guess. There are so many things here. <laughs> um, about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. 
believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. How many pages? Yeah, it's like three almost. Like one, two, and then like two and a half. It's there's so much stuff to go through. <laughs> On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker and was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again! This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Bought it at. It had it, plus it had its fingerprints on it too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to know this, notice that. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim. Neil Marshall was carrying it. Inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Stab in the back. Died from a punctured heart and lung. The knife tip was found in the wound. The broken tip was found in the victim's body. It belonged to murderer Joe Dark. Cool. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gantz. It's not money, but it does concern the chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Do we have anything? <laughs> oh, I was hoping it would be the music. <laughs> Not this. Okay, cool. Not that. Apparently, maybe I don't. Maybe. Let's go find Edgeworth, I guess. Sorry, just dropping by here to go back to my own offices. <laughs> No one's here today. Not even Miss Star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15pm. I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've gotta find all the answers by tomorrow. Oh, okay. Edgeworth. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is! He looks like he's writing something. What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying about around. It's another relegation to me. Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. I 
It's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? I'm like some people I don't have all day. I want to check this thing. I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Okay, so I have to wait until... Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth! Is that Detective Gumshoe at the window? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! Hold on. First, let me see what this girl... Girl's doing crawling around my feet. <laughs> he didn't even look. What? L letter of... If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, letter of resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. But, Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I walked. You don't need to tell me. She should just turn it off. The path I walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one sh else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder what can I probably get <laughs> worth yelling jazz? <laughs> There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean that the evidence was fal falsified? The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. The fact remains that the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it come why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow with the last day, it's too late to change prosecutors. I bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence it seems so short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seems strange about it. I will show in that picture. Hold on. Mm. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Just receiving awards can't exactly skip, skip out on the ceremony. I finished off at the office in the morning and drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes. There's odds and ends. Clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh, yeah, Chief Gant asked to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. But if he got it from the evidence room... As, uh... <laughs> this is so fucking long. As this claims he was in the evidence room, right? Does that mean he has a locker there? Why does he have a locker there? 
It's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you, asked you to? That's right. Okay, now I can draw on the picture. This picture. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief, Ga Chief Gant's office. So I just grabbed it and took it with me. <laughs> Prosecutor Neil Marshall had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding is a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Phoenix has a clip to me. <laughs> I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Tell me about the trophy. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written, written with two characters. The first means halberd, which, and the second means shield. Have you heard the story? Me? Oh, uh, sure, everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though, for Emma's sake? Very well. <laughs> Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd. He claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard the story before, right? <laughs> anyway. As you mentioned, the very descriptions of these... Items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. That knife is not a helper! <laughs> oh, I see! So the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. Story time with that <laughs> Ah... The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue, pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Okay. Bye. Excuse me? Who this? Oh, it's you. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star! I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who's sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. You know, I thought that was going in a completely different direction when I, when I, <laughs> when I read the first person who sucked. I was like, eh. I once read a paradox questioning about if the god can create a stone so heavy that even their power wouldn't be enough to lift it. Huh. Interesting. So I never thought you would go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't be all attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness. If they can create a stone like that, then their power isn't endless because they can't lift a stone. You got a point. The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of, of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is made to be savored when eaten. Miss Star's hatred toward Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. How do I have to talk to her? Ah, Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. 
There's a can crate. Oh, look, that's just the same mine. Wait, but if they can't create a stone, they can't lift. Again, their power isn't endless because they can't create it. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. He must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her... Made her? Made him? I assume, or her? Wait, who is- who are we talking about right now? No! Wait, no, it has to be Lana, right? Made her all the more desperate. Her? Okay, thank you! <laughs> Lana Sky. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. Lana. Chief Gant. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of the evidence. Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear while other items were kept secret. You don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us, save Goodman, were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief... That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position, position as chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? Y you mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change last. Finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. You can tell me about the legendary duo. Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation with uh, Lana in second in Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gan's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that I mean his ability to attract evidence. He'd produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always rushed out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have, would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. You star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Okay, uh... Nope. Wrong. There we go. Criminal Affairs. 
Oh, and you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files, turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your pers persistency, but my answer is still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That officer is the last crime scene. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Yes, I know exactly what it is. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. I can't do that if someone found out. They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, it may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, detective. Thank you. Let's go! Come shoot to the rescue. Indeed. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Rin. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe is a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you two to bail me out. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I, I, I wasn't sneaking, I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point in giving us your ID card? Hey, don't do that to my card! I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. We're all in this together! <laughs> You really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. No, let me examine. Alright, what we got? Let's start over here, actually. A window. Not really that much of interest. This is... These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the pr prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey! This is when Lana and I went to that theme park. This was Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Just imagine Edgeworth doing the dance. <laughs> Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gan must still keep a clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff legends are made of. Does he keep it in memory of her or in memory of the crime? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over it with Luminol too afterwards. I'm just gonna This was taken on that on that day two years ago. 
the day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. After receiving his reward trophy, Miss, uh, his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. Then went along with the chief again to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? Can we already look at that? Okay, now we're over here. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. A seven digit number. I think I just might know what it is. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Do I know? You want to try my birth date? It's. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Bingo! <laughs> wow! <laughs> what number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? Seven, 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... Seven, 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 seven. Is that ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Well, hell yeah, let's look inside. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a... A... a shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here, too. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items re related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's gotta be something we can show the detective. Uh, well, for one... De detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Oh, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right, one of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean this one? That was in the safe? It's that one! That was in the safe! Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells! Let's see if it fits! Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. So right, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. Wait, and it's here. There! It fits like a charm. That of course means Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. What an ugly mess. <laughs> in other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a load of this! What is it? 
This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line? That's blood! I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in a safe? I'm not finished looking around my way. Wow, look at the size of Chief's, Chief Gant's desk! Speaking of that, when we were her early, earlier... You two? Chief Gant! Put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list run twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at the case name. Huh? Cell 9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, 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 about evidence lists. Normally they're twice as long? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. Half-sized list of evidence. The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it. The chief must be hiding something about that case. It would appear so. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons. Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay! <laughs> I was like, yeah, you you don't have any taxes yet! <laughs> Shh! Be careful what, of what you say. Who knows, the chief may be hiding in his in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. I mean, if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out, you guys. Don't know how scary that can- Blah! Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. Okay, uh, let's try the luminol. Wherever the hell that is, that's somewhere in here! Ah, there it is. Wrong button. I always press the wrong freaking button. There you go. Yeah, I just bought some of that stuff. Now I can go around detecting blood traces too. Wow, is that a new type? I've never seen that bottle before. Add three inches to your base height. Base height? Hey, let me see that. Looming tall. New and improved growth formula. You mean this can't detect any blood traces? Uh, well, it's not quite the same thing as luminol. Well, that's why the lady at the counter had that smirk on her face. Oh, I, I was presenting it to him. Sorry, I'm dim. Wrong way. This way. Whoa! This area must have been covered in blood. Is this from that incident? It must be, when prosecu Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Two years have passed, so the reaction's kind of dull. So a murder really did take place here. Interesting. Shouldn't the police hand out important things like luminol to the detective? Psh. I don't think they care that much. Is that all there is here? Yes, yeah, let's just talk to the wall. <laughs> That desk on the other side of the room. Is that your sister's? Yes. That's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. True, plus I'd leave all the investigation up to the lawyers for some reason. <laughs> okay, but true, though. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it there. 
He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New, at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except Chief Gant and the cleaning lady who was in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. And miners. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only come came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be. No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on! Not so fast, buddy! Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go at that. Sorry, this guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. Here you go ignoring me again. That's what the chief was reading before, isn't it? You know, when we first came in here? Yeah. It looks like the right side of the form's been torn off. So Mr. Edgeworth's list really was only half of the whole thing. Something else is bugging me more than that. Take a look at the back of that form, pal. The back? I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I better, better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Huh? Oh, no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. But then, is there anything unlike the other one? Do I even have the other one? I don't have the other one. Edgeworth, give me the other one! <laughs> Anything else here? Alright, hold on. Name of deceased Neil Marshall. Dead in time of death, February 19th, between 7 and 7 30 p.m. Cost of death single stem, step when piercing heart and lung. Assessment died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. to make it out, but there's a dark red stain here. Mm, looks like blood. This piece, of, this piece the chief has is different though. The blood stains on the other pieces are just spots. This one's a line. That's odd. Okay, cool. That's all you have to say about that. Do, do, do. Show this to him. Right. Please. I'm the prosecutor on this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on the tea. Just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very stylish manner. Whose side are you on anyway? Maybe if I just show him my best evidence, I can get some reaction out of him. <laughs> can you illuminate all the, the vase? I don't... I mean, 
Luminol is just used for finding traces of blood. You obviously that's blood. I don't need to luminol that. We can see it's blood. <laughs> I also don't think I can. Maybe if parts are wiped away, but what what good does that do? Oh, like see, okay, I get it. Okay, let's examine again. Uh, because uh, there was something else over here. Let's see, I can't can't check it out anymore. Oh wait, there's something more on the desk apparently. Wow, look at the size of Chief Ken's desk. Found this inside the drawer. The list of the evidence from the SL9 incident. Mr. Edgeworth had the other list, other half of that list. What would that list be doing here? Better look at a, a little more into this list. Yeah, but I don't have it. Do I? I can't see it. Anyways, I can't read this. Let's go back to Edgeworth once more and just talk to him. Hi, just dropping by to just ditch you again. No excuse, two years ago, whatever. It was falsified. It's Edgeworth. Deprived my work. Damn. Something's gonna happen. Oh, that's just that. Um, I already heard this one. Dun, 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 Nothing. Um. I won't be able to give any information so I really don't know. system okay, cool. Hmm. I always go the wrong way, whatever. Anything floor not chief's organ sure is a sight to behold occasionally we hear him playing it from the criminal affairs department it's on the second floor and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building when the detective screws up the chief calls them to his office and makes them listen to the organ for hours what's so bad about that music suits the soul after that, the detective can't hear anything for days except for the ringing in the ears. So it's an instrument of punishment, literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. Ah, okay. That's just a window. I don't need the window. How is the window important? Look at that giant window. Makes you want to crash through it and jump outside. Come <laughs> Uh, This is the 15th floor. 
I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detective. I've always dreamed about doing something like that. That's depressing! <laughs> Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as it doesn't go crashing through that window. And he gets fired. Don't say that. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm be honest, I did not expect that. Can one of you, like, figure out what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> I'm on the... Day 3 investigation. No spoilers, though. For me, I mean. Uh, but just, like, tell me, like, what to... Where to go and what to show him. Something. Gumshoe is a man of dreams. Maybe not the... Most... Positive of dreams, but dreams nonetheless. Ow. I. Uh, my earphones is squeezing my ear. I really need to invest in um fingerprint kits. Okay. Wherever the hell that fingerprint kit is. Take the gumshoe. I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? It's a great idea, detective. All right, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about the cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Alright. Thank you so much, Fleur. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder. Yeah, we know how to do it. Then, then, yeah, blow them away. What are you, my mom? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get this over with. Let's do this one. Oh, yes. You got a fingerprint. Sprinkle cocaine on the print and then snort it up. <laughs> oh, it's so dumb. Why is it so finicky? You can see that it's it's literally ah. Uh... All right. It's not Meekins. It's not Jake Marshall. It's not Bruce Goodman. It's not Dick Gumshoe. It's not Last Guy. Emma? No. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints are they? Were they? Huh. Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be dark prints. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. For now. Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. Well, was I any help? Of course! Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. No, that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that ri right, you in the coat? 
Chief Gant. I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then I thought of a certain detective. You mean... me, sir? Now then. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coats. Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way down, way out. But we didn't we crumple it up? <laughs> you won't be needing it anymore. But sir, now get out. Y yes, sir. We'll be on our way to it then. Wait, you the one without spiky hair. Don't go yet. M me, sir. I'd like a word with you. But, sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair. You're free to go. Mr. Wright! Look, pal. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office. I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try and smooth things out over with the Chief again. Later, pal. After that, I heard from Emma, she said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. Well, you've told me over these past couple of days. It's absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. You fucking useless bitch. <laughs> really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. You said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. And you did a good job mentoring you. Rather jealous. Seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. That's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Yes. I have to admit I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No. Oh, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, whom, may I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? Oh. Take that! Well, Miss Sky, Mr. Wright, you're addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. 
The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other. Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. Want proof of the chief's wrongdoings? Here it is. That evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, all right. But it's not the chief. Who would that be? Why, well, you, of course. Me? Yes. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's crazy. That's scary, scary I mean. Oh, yeah, you seem to have the markings of a criminal in you. But with all your fallacious accusations. Care to spend tonight in the cell next to mine? If you ask me, you're the scary one. Okay, no worries. I just found this in the safe in the chief's office. I figured it would be one of, one of them, but I wasn't sure which one. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other, th other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. And the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cop cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. <laughs> Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes. <laughs> You were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk's lock was broken. And I discovered that murder weapon while in inspecting the body. Murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. A knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him, so I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife? That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that's the reason for the bandage on your right hand. Yes, it seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star, huh? Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't want it... And I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that. By whatever means possible. So you hid Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it in Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister to tell her what had happened and had to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. At least, I thought I could trust him at, at the time. 
However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade on his own. Oh, you mean, uh, wanting the case to die, he wanted to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made his, up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright. Both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've gotta get to the bottom of everything. I wish she's sitting on that chair with her back turned. She's like... I mean, obviously, I can just spin spin my chair, but it, it's it's not it's not the same, you know. You gotta pick it up at this time. <laughs> Detective Goodman's real murderer. <sighs> and what went down in the chief's office two years ago? Those chairs bolted to the ground to protect the guards from harm should the inmate become violent. I've never been to a, a prison, so I, I can't I can't really say for sure. A right, uh, final day, so it's uh, we have like uh, we have. Trial former, trial ladder, and trial ladder left. So we have three chapters left. And we're only one hour and a half into the stream. Okay. Let's -a go. This is the defendant lobby, all right? But there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth, yes! Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777777777 ID number is, that is. Wait, how many is that? 777777777. Yeah, that is a. No, it's not 8. Well, hold on. 7777. I struggle with reading things when there are like several of the same like either uh, numbers or letters like after one another so it's like I'm writing my own name which is L-I-L-L-Y and I'm like is there one L or is are there two L's there I can't tell <laughs> sometimes it's uh seven 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 seven, seven. seven. Okay, so it's, it's not it's not just me. <laughs> there are seven sevens. Which is kind of funny because seven is also my my uh, lucky number, my favorite number. So who the number of the seven 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 ID number is that it? Okay, cool. <laughs> well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. 
like this, I mean. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll no ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. It depends on you. If she is found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her. Has on her. Ha ba ha boy didn't it? Why can't I fucking read? Woo hoo! Okay. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant ha has on her, it's now. Reading is hard. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Aji, been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my own work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is your what is this pro proposal of yours? Lena, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all the charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. Hey, wait, it's, it's the 21st today. Oh, did my, oh my god, my brother. It's today, yay. And I suppose we're in like 2017 now, so it's the... Uh, it's the four-year anniversary of Bruce Goodman's death! Give him, <laughs> give him a round of applause. <laughs> F in the chat for Bruce Goodman. <laughs> oh my god. I got a, a message from my brother uh, like 20 minutes ago. I wanted to ask him to try and uh, like make like um, a remix of the I want to defend theme you know the the blue badger theme so <laughs> just because it's, it's the fucking stupidest thing it's like uh, we're not finished listening to that song by the way it will it will come back at a later point and it's like the worst part of this case because so many people have struggled with it <laughs> And it's driven them insane. Anyways. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! <laughs> My jam! <laughs> you can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana! Your Honor. I hereby forfeit my my right to an attorney. Forfeit. Sorry, I, I, I know English. <laughs> the prosecution may lack direct evidence against me. But it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. The request is legally valid, although it is, this is an unprecedented... 
unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for this verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Hold it! Oh! Objection? Edward! All right. One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edward! The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at the stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gantz. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. The sudden confession from the defendant. It's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Sky. I request the court her hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Scott. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy, you live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget all about that, though. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. You sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Felix needs to present all kinds of evidence, but Eddie just yeah, stares at the judge. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? It will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Hmm, never forgot. Okay. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped in the dark just then. The lights went out. The lights? It was just about this this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. 
If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. A sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw. Yes, but at the time the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Let's go to the picture. This picture the witness drew, I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Y yes, Your Honor. And your picture of what this seems to have been lost. Do I show? Objection! Yes, okay. Miss Redgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its, exist its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that, as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. They, that may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the Estel 9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. Turn it... Ah! What's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it! That's the picture I drew! Indeed, two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have... Should have... <laughs> should have access to that list. Huh? These lists... There... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order! Order! But Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor! Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half... And there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... Th that thing! Here we fucking go! Yes! That, 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 that thing! That thing that was dancing in the evidence room! Everyone had just left fucking PTSD from that fucking dancing! Oh my god. Clearly this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? <laughs> Gets blue flasher flashbacks. Huh? Oh, yes, sir, Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. This 
is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Instance. My friends are still trying to figure out how I got you to say that on who it was. <laughs> well. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, I guess. Also, hey, welcome back. <laughs> to think a flash of lightning would could burn such, a, such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Doe Dark about the murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Hmm. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. I wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. Better watch out, or you might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well. That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Alright, let me fucking look this up because I'm, I'm too dumb. It was Neil stabbed. In the back! Whoa ho ho ho! Yes. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. This picture, the witness drew, contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? It's the victim, right? Um, I think it's uh, this part here. Okay, apparently not. Hmm? I don't see what's so strange about that because <laughs> that's because the drawing stinks. <laughs> Mr. Wright, how could you? <laughs> you act of making an innocent girl cry should warrant the death penalty. <laughs> I guess he means I should shift the blame to others. Yes, well, so long as the defense has cleared th his lesson. Learned his lesson, I mean. Wow, everyone are back. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> Maybe the knife. Yeah, that's also something. I'd better take another look at the autopsy report. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. The knife, of course. The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see the tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But, Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Objection! And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Objection! Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. 
right. But what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undi undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this in inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> you can tell it's getting hot by the sheer amount of objections going around. Yes. Not so f Okay, there is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? Treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. <laughs> oh, Bob Ross has too many viewers too much. I didn't know he was live on Twitch since today. Yeah, they like broadcast his uh, his videos. On Twitch. I've known about it for a while, I think. Order! 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 Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. Oh well, yeah, YouTube channel too. That's right. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gantz. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Huh. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe... Joe Dark's. Could there have been one? There is another one. The witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw. It can't just be explained away by simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then... Stay real in the drawing. That you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here, inside this picture. This is this is a picture of the award ceremony. Ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the the broken murder weapon. Notice the award prosecutor marshal is holding. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. Being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order! 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 Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out his knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in, his, in this dangerous situation. That. That can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors' award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? 
to me. This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! Oh boy. But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. It's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait, I I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Redworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it will be best if we added this to the witness testimony. Would you please tell us what you recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now... The blue badger? This should be interesting. <sighs> Alright. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw... The blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw a shadow. The music killed the prosecutor. <laughs> the music. <laughs> dun 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 dun. This is certainly most unusual. Objection. Try impossible. Chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That will mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes. Well, the defense may now begin its cross examination. Stop. Please, don't pursue this any further. Lana! What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Skye. We've already come, to come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff! Please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. When is okay. Panicked. Interesting. What do you mean you think? It it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. Sky was almost killed before she was a witness to a murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with a knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then, what happened next? Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him here. But it was the chief of detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother. Just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with, his win with its winning smile and all? A plushie? How can there be a plushie of something that doesn't exist yet? Oh yeah, you're back by the way. So, yeah, this didn't exist, like, two years ago. That's right, but I still remember it. 
He had three creepy horns. It's just pointless. The thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. It was important. It's what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, then I suppose you have an explanation. If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. It wasn't Emma saw when the lightning flashed. Who is this blue badger, really? Just might know. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on the fateful day, on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Time travel. <laughs> Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. Well, I know. <laughs> Which is why I'm doing this. Mysterious blue badger was in fact this. But that um what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Oh boy, here we fucking go. This isn't right. Damn it! <laughs> Is that not like it? Allow me to remind the defense its case hinges on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept his claim. I got to find just the right angle. Oh my god. Maybe I should rotate it. Okay, whatever. Come on, Mr. Wright, you can do it. Uh. Probably gonna be here for a while. <laughs> Is it not this way? In the beginning, I was like so cocky because of like, I know exactly how this is gonna work. Fucking guess not. I got the music. I mean, 
It has to be this, right? Yes! Oh! Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No. Can't be. Good job, thank you. <laughs> Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witness on the day of the crime was actually this. I did like the same thing the first time, but like I it was tilted a bit too much to the side, so it was like, meh, no, you got it wrong. <laughs> Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edward. You see. This changes everything. Indeed. Very well then, please tell us. What's different now that we know that the witness saw this jar? Oh! I was- I, I had to think. But because... This, you know? We can see the, the photo, yes! We see the vase, like, in the back here, and that's over by the statue. Or not the statue, like, the, the, the suit of armor, that's what I meant, the statue. The location. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lay lying near Lana Skye's desk. The witness testified so herself. Objection! Yes. And it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gant's office. Objection! Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office. Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah! The suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There was another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless. I I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright? What's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall.
You mean Mr. Marshall died because of me? No! I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was a witness who took the victim's life and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? Sorry, Miss Guy, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin this crime on her? Imagine that, coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence three years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else away from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? <sighs> I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have proof. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If you don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hmm. Huh. Touché, Miss Sky. Of course. That only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. It's... it's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I gotta think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. Maya isn't in this case. This is the bonus case from the first game, so Maya isn't here. This message from the deceased is already in our position. Mr. Wright! Will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Guy. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is it going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used a few precious moments left to him to leave behind the message. One that someone apparently wiped away. The blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. No! Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, 
And leave these blood stains will reveal to us the answer. Got to connect these dots. Yes. This murderer's name. defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. people. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Seaworthy, can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant, do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosec prosec pr prosecutor in that case, were you not? <laughs> yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. <laughs> Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know we aren't defenders of justice? What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? He might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! 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 <laughs> the gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears, unable to settle the crowd. The judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Two chapters left! Let's fucking go! <sighs> trial ladder part one. <laughs> Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. I take Atlanta's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give you this, give this to you, if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law? Edgeworth was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. You could at least study some evidence law, really. Chief Prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. 
Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why well, I'm still sitting on that prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today it hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility has been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly caused the man's death. And now, you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real co ki co killer is still out there. What? We're going to expose him, no matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Oh, good with some water. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, ahem. Normally, this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, ahem, ahem, <coughs> This isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh... Struck a bargain? You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that! It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the pro The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright. I do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. <laughs> Phoenix accepted Edgy's proposal. Did Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the, of the crime. I feel we should turn on the lights behind me. I forgot about that. I forgot not only those, I also forgot my colored lights. Not that you actually can see them very well on the stream, but you know what? It's fine. Oops, I forgot to turn them on. I just realized. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Huh. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the la least likely to have been manip manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, bailiff. Please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation! So, you want to play hardball, huh? Please, Mr. Gant! Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Yeah, you act alright. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Alright, oh, what's the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean the time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? 
Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh? Like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son. Either you're very brave or very foolish. You're aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at, at his disposal. Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hmm. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. Hmm. Okay. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means... He found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. I think you said earlier it was my, my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway... So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt, but moving a body and hiding evidence are, are inexcusable, no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you're better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy. Always a smooth talker. Which piece of evidence ties Gan to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence. But that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gan to the incident. Well, I'm like thinking like, uh... Did Lana just like carry him over to the other side of the fucking room all by herself? I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but like... There would probably be like a larger trail of blood, right? <laughs> Anyways, what evidence are we going for? Damn. Oh my god, there are three full pages now! <laughs> Oh, no, I haven't- I still haven't read this. Okay, rules for submitting evidence. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. The fact that we found this in his safe? Okay. Yes! You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. 
That's that blue badger you showed us earlier. Everyone are just <laughs> fucking hung up on that blue badger. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gantz, these articles of evidence un uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. We're all fans of the Blue Badger. <laughs> Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? <laughs> Here's the defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well... You were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, Rido? Sorry, I'm just like thinking of something that happens later down the line and I'm like... <laughs> However, Detective Gumshoe was present during their investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. Dick and Paul torture. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god, I am a child. I am a child. <clears throat> <laughs> what? Detective Gumshoe. If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you, you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies. My apologies, chief. But would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. All right, Aji. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? What are these guys? Telepathic? I wanna... <sighs> what do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. And here I was thinking, they should take pics or something while they got evidence back then. <laughs> but that could be forged too! Like, you, you can't hide. <laughs> you can't hide from the law! <laughs> if concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery... I'm not through speaking yet, Rido. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. Hmm... Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. When wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, 
will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Raido. Think about it. Hmm. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you reap from all this. Oh? I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would of course be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh! The resolution of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Ho ho ho! Oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Ed Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be made chief anyway. Uh. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means... There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it's out in the open now. But gee, would you mind if, we, if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. Be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Holy. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the one person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho oh, oh. ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? True, you might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it could benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I mean. Very well then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Well... Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye, the, the defendant. I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. The judge is an idiot. Yeah, but we've been new though. Like, since since when is that news? <laughs> Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self profit. Self profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But, but how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me? But despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets. Judge, please. <laughs> oh, wait! You must mean puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. <laughs> Admitted, chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. Amazing work, Judge. <laughs> right, oh my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? 
Do you have any proof of this? That I control Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana? She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright! You, you can't be serious! Huh? This, this is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency! To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder! It's <laughs> impossible! <laughs> All too much for the judge's tiny brain. Y Your Honor, I was merely reiter re reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. Too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. Looks like he's the one who's, who's decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is... Is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. It better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gan to the murder of Detective Goodman. I'm leaning towards this. Or this. The ID record. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Of the crime. <laughs> there was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Seven 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 seven. Something like that. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. <laughs> what? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean. I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 77777777. I don't know. I thought that was quick. The same as a remaining ID and a card number on that list. Yeah, seven sevens. It's it's a lot. Also, I struggle with reading things when they're like written after another. Also, when they like write out seven 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 like without any spaces, so I'm like, I can't. I don't know when the end of the word is and the beginning of the next word is, and it's awful. This is the worst code. <laughs> Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Order! Order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. Chief Gant, so you admit it. You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime? 
What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of course not! Why would he? I hadn't seen him in days! You hadn't seen him in days, Chief Gant? I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. I'm so proud of you, Edgeworth! Go, Edgeworth! <laughs> if Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Alright, what we got? This? I mean, it mentioned SL9, and it also mentions the date. Hmm. Oh, can only be submitted to Chief of Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Which would be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filed, filled out a lost <laughs> lost item report. He would have had to had that, give that report to the chief of police. But you are in yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he fi filed it. He filed it. How do I know? You ask. Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to. Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Kent. Then, you accompany the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. <laughs> Maximum extent of the law for punishing Phoenix. <laughs> Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for just saying it straight out in, in the court. <laughs> but wait! The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No! Chief Gant, you didn't! Murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime, for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. But the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after- And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you! Take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, we left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. 
And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue, just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, chief can't use this. Wow, ho, ho, ah. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Oh! I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. But one thing that I'm like kind of struggling to understand is that how Edgeworth drove that car then for 30 minutes and just like didn't realize that it smelled of blood or anything. <laughs> like I would assume you would smell the blood. Though to be fair, there wasn't like a lot of blood in the trunk or anything. So I don't know, just like something that I don't really find making sense. Okay. Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edward's car. Edgeworth is a man with a busy mind. Yes, unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Skye. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal? To the defense's outrageous accusations. Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Rhino, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're if we're to make it in time for the early bird special. But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify, I'm invoking that right now. What? This is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman? That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the cu current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright. Your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of his body. Do we have any concrete, concrete proof? I have no proof. No use showing evidence, I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. CRG? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Righto. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Yaji, I'll leave the rest to you. I 
warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Fuck, was he wrong? Fuck! Oh my god. Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of her hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, one more witness, who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth. We can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth... The defendant. Miss Lana Sky. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15pm on February 21st. Her task, to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with certain s with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Okay, so I did the right thing. Oh my god. I got so scared, I was like, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Who says that? Hold on. Huh? Chief Kent, I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty. For Neil Marshall's murder. Uh, this isn't good. Oh, hi, Jan. Thank you for dropping by for a few seconds. I appreciate that. Of course you'd never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alright then, I've got a lunch date to meet. Okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. Huh. <sighs> like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. A chief is something else, huh, pals? Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Uh, don't worry, I've already decided where to work now. In your office! <laughs> My office? Sure, I'll take the place of that top a girl you used to work with. Could he mean... Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm. <laughs> Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said? Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks. What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. He mainly forfeits his right to say anything too. Oh, it's Emma! Emma! Are you okay? Yeah. When I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um... Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. But you know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she chained. Changed, ch changed, changed, <laughs> changed, 
Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gan's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. To, get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going to go with you. I want to be there. Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. Yes. All right, final chapter. Now then, will the defendant, Miss Lana Skye, please take the stand? Miss Lana Skye, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Miss Regworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Skye. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course, the truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. We're the only chance we have to get Gant. I've worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to, the, to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana... If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright. You've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. But what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Hmm. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? The prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. It's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright. But I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. Well, just to protect me. So when you found the scene like this, what should you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. 
I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound that moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound, and then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know Edgeworth. You always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of the others. Hmm. I'll give up the knife. But why'd you do that? Come now, Mr. Wright. Even you should be able to figure it out. Very well. Let's add this to the witness's testimony. The reason Miss, Miss Sky fabricated the knife. I knew the tip of the weapon found buried in his body would be all the proof we needed. According to your testimony, Prosecutor Marshall's broken knife was a murder weapon, right? Yes, and leaving it at that might point the blame away from Dark. I felt the most effective way to get him was get him convicted would be by having the tip of his knife found inside the victim's body. So you, you buried it inside the victim's stab wound? Yes, because I hated Dark for what he did. Hmm. Huh. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna ask about the... I'm gonna ask about the body. When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was. By Chief Gigant's desk. I was about to call him Giant. <laughs> but the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Sky moved the body. Pieces of the jar that chattered during the events threatened my plan. Pieces of the jar? You mean... Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more ex ex expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at the crimes, if you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead, and Dark was laying, lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently, the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. I have a feeling there is more to it than that. There must be a contradiction there somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. Hmm. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Wright? Emma didn't do it. Period. You're so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's lying. She did it so that I wouldn't be blamed for what happened. In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Is it right? My sister's lying! Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists you fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I've got to get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. Objection. Nope, that's not it. There it is. Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered. If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. 
contradiction in my testimony? He testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must not yet have been broken before he died. Huh? He couldn't have written Emma's name on the shattered blood. On the, on the shattered jar. <laughs> order! Order! Your Honor, it would appear. More information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody mes message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're, in, you're as in the dark as we are. About the truth towards which we are headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean you were, you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. What did I say? That was so weird. I don't know. Whatever. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Then why would you wipe it away? So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. Lana, you do that for me? Seems you two might make up yet. Anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. Hmm. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. And now I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. Even I carry a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. <clears throat> you sure you got them all? But you didn't get them all. There was one piece you didn't get. Objection! Miss Sky, I believe this jar conceals the truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... Still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off, blood off of them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up at the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defendant simply have missed the piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Can you believe that? Have you forgotten, Your Honor? Speaking of, though, um, t today, like, a while before I was, like, supposed to stream, my, my phone was lying on my desk. And suddenly I was like, where did I put my phone? 
<laughs> it was like right there. I was like talking to Bengi on Twitter and I was like, where's my phone? Where'd my phone go? I was like panicking. I was like, it's literally right in front of you, <laughs> stupid bitch. <laughs> oh my God. When this witness arrived at the scene and the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on the shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant. At the time, he was looking for Dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? <coughs> no! Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. <laughs> uh, how old is the judge? Do we even know how old the judge is? No, we don't. Okay, well. The judge has lost it officially. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet, baby girl. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. The judge truly is the sharpest knife in the drawer. If it's the only knife in the drawer, then yes. Huh. <laughs> Prior to the witness, yes. He proceeded to bre break the jar. And purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. It's a secret. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But, but why would Chief can't do that? Well, the, the, the judge's age, yeah. In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Skye believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Skye became the chief's puppet. No, I did it on my own. Please, sis. Stop trying to protect the chief! I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake! No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that, coming from my own client. Crime scene really looks like they're playing Twister! <laughs> Please, do I have a picture of it? I don't. Okay. Hmm. I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, the judge was born sometime in 1971. I can't brain enough for that. What if? We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lena, maybe right after all. What do you mean, right? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright. Miss Skye, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. Well, my mom is older than the judge. Yeah, mine too. He looks older. He does. But I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Sky, if you will. I... I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. He isn't even 50 yet, I thought he was like 80. 50 in the game, or like 50 as like this year? 
the price they had to pay to be the sharpest knife, I guess. <laughs> In game, wow. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. All right, the witness may testify once more for the final time. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor's sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gantz help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable! The body was impaled on the armor's sword! You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright? She really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check out- check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. I know exactly what it is. It's the- It's this. Oh, hold on. Hey, there's a picture here! Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted criminal affairs only after I had rearranged everything. <gasps> Mr. Wright! That piece cut, cut out from his vest. Could that be? The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What's this? Print, isn't it? That cloth, it has fingerprints on it. Whose ever fingerprints those are? It must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints! They're yours, Emma! Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Oh. oh boy, I wasn't even ready to read. Come now, OG. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief, can't. What? Now you want to make me out as a bad guy too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two with my in my defense. Objection. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. <laughs> this must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. <laughs> Ah, oh, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present ev evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't, but someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, Raido? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? 
You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves you knocked over Neil Marshall, causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now, I'm sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? Better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Prosecutor Marshall? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Dant! You opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. Conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this? You're safe. What? That means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Rido. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean you admit to it? Damon shit 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 yeah, pretty much. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister... Sister. That when she saw the evidence, she would ask me for my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work out, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for? A fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on, message on this jar too? Ho ho ho! Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean, that piece of cloth? Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gantz. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off. The victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that. Being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. Should have shown it then, before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright then, let's see this conclusive evidence. 
The evidence that shows you actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh yes, at last you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It could not have been forged. It must be authentic. Conclusive evidence. Oh ho ho. You were slow on the uptick as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Raido had all this time to present this evidence. But he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You already know. You know whose fingerprints are on that. M Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. The person to whom these fingerprints belong to is... Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Oopsies. Oh ho ho ho! You're really something, Rido. You knew this girl did it all along. And you still try to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You... you monster! Miss Sky? You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. Miss Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Huh. But I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career too. You purposely conceal this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer. Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you're absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. It's the picture. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of this vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is, cho is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth! Wait, there's no blood on it! Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at the time. No, this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. 
and most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky? Picked up the unconscious pro prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword. <laughs> then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. The jar that they then, that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. Make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. It's finally all over. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. that was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order! Order! What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Aji? Earlier, old Rido here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. <laughs> did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Miss Gans- Miss- Miss- <laughs> Mr. Gans' claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. True. Legal evidence cannot be used to convict, convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm. Huh. Well, Mr. Wright. It seems at last. Time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposefully and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? I admit. I refuse to present it at one point. Aha! So the evidence is illegal! No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present the evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved in presenting evidence. No, Ajay, don't listen to his lies! He's nothing but a coward! You can't really believe! There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. It's the book! This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at, what, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth. Nothing more. What? See, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule number one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your so safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want the relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... 
Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of, of the victim's vest. Oh, yes! No! It was then that you approved this cloth. This conclusive evidence. Yes! You, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant! The killer was you! should have gotten rid of him. That good-for-nothing scum. For two years he's been snooping around the department trying to get something from me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate re the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. If the evidence is transferred, I'll, I'll lose my chance—my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you gotta help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room, then all of a sudden he decided to speak out! What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, as, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, it's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Gant looks like a Pokemon character. You're not wrong. <laughs> well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. It's when I saw it that a cursed knight. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprints. On Detective Gumshoe's locker. It used to be known as the crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. And you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Leaving the prosecution's car aside. How? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have time to, to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments and the glove. Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. 
fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. One day, you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, a G. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be, long ago. You were once a fine investigator, and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Aji. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raido here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. Beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Guy, I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my, what high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you just might make it to the top. She smiles! Oh, that's so cute. I'm oh, sorry. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Skye. And to you too, Miss Redworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Hm. It was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Miss Redworth. Stop it. I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor? You are innocent of murder. However, although the chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. The trial will be scheduled for those crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Yes! Not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. At long last, it's finally over. Emma! Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. I can see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Miss Redworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. You know, I did my best too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. 
Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here. I've seen half of your people at funerals. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of... You, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Lana! Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell you if you won't. What about the guards in the back, though? What about them? <laughs> Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago... It was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in this mess. Sis... I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was scared. I was scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because, in so doing, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. Me? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right? Edgeworth? Uh, Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. <laughs> Where was he hiding? I just came to say... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Dredgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Kent was right. The spice criminals, I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day, you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary. I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. 
That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone un undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. This? Damn it, I can't, I can't. I don't know, I should have saved. Oh no. I mean, it has to be this, right? Right? Someone please just check a guide and just like double check it for me because... <laughs> oh my god. Technically, I could I could do it myself, but like I I I've, I've promised myself that I wouldn't look up a guide myself this time. But I'm using a loophole with with the chat, <laughs> so please. <laughs> Damn, I should have saved. I knew I should have saved. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. That's the picture. I yes! Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list, and I had the other. The part we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. It didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth. If you'll excuse me. There's still some loose ends that need that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Whatever you do, just remember, you can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth. I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I better be going too. Okay, but I'll be by to visit soon. Seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. 
believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well. <laughs> you see, Mr. Wright here is the one who will be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? Well, you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be killed, kidding me, pal. Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Why is it? I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Objection! That's it. Finally, that's the first game. Oh my god. Huh. <sighs> I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at, as a, at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. Only a matter of time before they get married. They are basically married at this point. <laughs> Yikes. I thought I was a goner for a moment there. and In the end, though, they overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show. You can't shake me off that easily. Oh, gumshoe. Family that solves crime together stays together. After this, I'm moving like straight on to the second game. Like I'm going through the entirety of Ace Attorney. Like we're doing the trilogy, then we're doing the investigations games, both of them. Then we are doing Apollo Justice. The new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been devoted to a security guard. My partner's keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm going to make detective. Yes, sir. And I can be just like that dick gumshoe. Oh, good that someone's looking up to him, I guess. Um Yeah, I'm 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 doing both the investigation game investigations game, uh games and then Apollo Justice. And then I am planning to get my 3DS modded. Uh, so that I can stream the other two 3DS games. I would play Digact and Snipebun, but it's just too much of a hassle. And I've also like heard that they might be planning on releasing them overseas. I don't know yet, though. So I guess we'll have to see. Though I have been wanting to play those games. I know that there is like a fan translation. <laughs> that dick gumshoe. What is it? Can't you see I'm having me a showdown with the stake lunch partner? Miss Start managed to sneak this into me. She's seen in seeing one of the guards, it seems. Well well, cowboy, it looks like you did it. You even gave Bambina back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? I look forward to it too. <laughs> Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a, a short break and be back with Ace Attorney um, probably at like on like Thursday. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he's been doing uh, something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get through, so I'd better be... Huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel! Sorry, gotta go! I'll be back with more Ace Attorney on, on 
Thursday. I'm pretty sure either Thursday or Saturday. Because I stream on the other channel that is currently in the, in the chat. Um, every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. Nothing suits the soul like fresh country air. Wait, how did I, how did I do this? Wait, her voice. Sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. So I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon training is about to begin. Coming! Well, see you around, Nick. Ah. <sighs> And also, my voice is actually doing kind of fine. It, it kind of hurts, I guess, but like it's nothing too bad. Oh boy. Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, it's you. Um, uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you your tea. What's going on? coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. was great. I had a wonderful time. It's kind of funny though because I'm like only on the second game but I'm like already like excited for the investigations games and uh, also the um, what's it called? I have to start new game? No? Yes? Yeah new game and then over here justice for all on Thursday. I am excited. Anyways. Oops. Wrong button. <laughs> oh my god. The characters are so great. Just like everything is so good. Huh. Four hours though. I don't think that's too bad. That means the entire case took like eight plus four. Twelve hours? Half a day? <sighs> and here I said, man, between six to eight. Tops nine. <laughs> well. I'm not sure like if this uh, if this was actually like the longest case. Ignore the sunglasses in the back. <laughs> My voice is still intact, like it's not like very much in pain. It was like at some point yesterday, it was like pretty bad, but after I like just took a break and had some burgers, <laughs> three minute burgers, it, it got way better again. So, yeah, I am so glad I took the time to just like trying my best to do one episode per stream it just feels like way more like connected than you know than if i were to do it like chapter by chapter it would just take ages 
finished the hell <laughs> congrats thank you thank you it took me a long time but i i persevered and i made it through it so, yeah with that in mind i am going to end it here and i thank you all so much for being here with me these past few, four hours plus those eight from from yesterday <laughs> so yeah hope to see you over on the other channel which should still be in the chat it's a lazy little gamer mom um uh, where i stream sometimes with my sister it depends she's really busy and just there's just a lot going on in her life right now so i might do solo streams uh, if i do solo streams there will definitely be some more okamiden which i am currently playing over there and uh, if she is here then uh, that will be a mystery game <laughs> but uh, anyways hope to see you either there or here on thursday i will be back on thursday i'm making that a promise right now thursday <laughs> So, yeah, with that, I don't really have much to, much else to say, really. Just dropping a few frames. Sorry about that. Huh. I'm trying to fix something, but it won't let me. There we go. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I hope you have a great day or night or whatever it is, wherever in the world you are. And uh, yeah, I, I hope to see you again next time. All right. Peace.